Hey guys, welcome to IELTS Energy TV. I'm your teacher, Aubrey Carter. And in today's video, Jessica and I each share a sample part two speaking answer describing a time that our plans had to change. And they're both about this holiday season. So definitely listen in. This is a common speaking part two question and you need to be ready with high level vocabulary and idioms. Hello, Aubrey. Almost Merry Christmas. Hi, Jessica. Almost Merry Christmas to you. I'm so excited. <laughs> I just noticed we're kind of matching. We're both like trying to stay warm with our and kind of going with the mauve. Got the memo. Um, <laughs> yes, we have a uniform, even though we work from home. Guys, um, maybe you can tell we are we are talking about some visual cues right now, even though we know it's a podcast, but this is also a YouTube video that we're doing today. Um, we try to let you guys know when we do this. We do this once a week now, where it is a video of the podcast that we also put on YouTube, guys. So check out our YouTube channel, IELTS Energy TV. Yes, I am. Ooh, this is good IELTS vocabulary for clothing and material, guys. I am currently wearing like a velour. I was going to say um, it looks like velour. It is. <laughs> a velour, guys, you got to go to YouTube to see it. That's the only way you're going to learn That's this it. vocab. It's a red velour tracksuit sweatshirt that I got from Goodwill for $3. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's amazing. Velour is <laughs> kind of like crushed velvet, right? Yes, it is. What's the difference between velour and crush, crushed velvet? Crushed <laughs> velvet know. is um, softer. Oh, yeah, that's say. true. That makes but, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Mine is, I don't know. Mine is not velour. It's a lot more boring, but it's we're both just trying to stay warm because we refuse to turn the heat on in our homes. <laughs> We have so much in common, I know. you know, we, we like to, uh, pinch the pennies. Yes, I think we do. Well, anytime, like, you know, that you have to like pay for children and like surprise vet visits. Like I had last night with my dog, like you yes. have to cut money where you can. Exactly. There will be unforeseen expenses. So save where you can. Right. That's my motto. <laughs> Actually. Oh my God, Aubrey, that's perfect. So that uh, adjective is perfect for our part two topic today, unforeseen circumstances, unforeseen. Guys, that is such a band seven and higher adjective. So that's just, that's an easy definition, right? Anything that you you couldn't predict, that you didn't see coming at all. Yep. So Aubrey, we are giving some amazing sample part two answers today. What are we talking about? Yes, we are going to talk about when plans have to change, right? So we're going to do both Jessica and I a sample part to answer about a time when plans that you made had to change. This is going to be a fun one. And we're going to have them be Christmas themed because it's almost yes! Christmas. <laughs> and we both uh, had to change plans regarding Christmas. So guys, this right. is like <laughs> very timely and very perfect. Um, But the, you know, okay. Aubrey and I are such dorks because we were like really excited when we figured out that we could like link this to IELTS and have it be so perfect for you candidates planning on taking the test. Because guys, like... I mean, how much stuff is unforeseen right now? How many plans have we had to change this year? And we'll probably continue having to change in the foreseeable future. So the, A, perfect because it's applicable, but also like I could see a student getting this in part two, which guys, this could totally be an IELTS part two cue card. Um, and it being hard, because again, like this isn't something that you just all of a sudden talk about for two minutes out of nowhere. Um, so I right. And if you say, wanted yeah. to talk about like, oh, I had to change the date of my IELTS exam, that would not be easy to talk about for a full two minutes. You'd have to like tell the story, right? Beginning, middle, end. You That's often something you have to have thought about like, okay, what details would I share? How involved should this get? So yeah, yeah these will be great sample part two answers to help you see how long two minutes is and how totally. much you need to share. Yeah. But that's a but that's a good point though. Like guys, remember that strategy uh before, during, after, beginning, middle, end. So beginning, middle, end of the story itself, but then like Aubrey said, like if you decide to talk about having to change your test date what are you going to do for two minutes to like make that a fluent answer with a lot of different details, right? So we we can extend that by practicing this strategy for a variety of topics before, 
during, after. What happened before? Give the context, right? Like before you made the plans, before whatever the story is. And then after, like, what are the consequences of this change? So guys, um, this strategy, practice it for today's topic because it will help you be ready for unforeseeable <laughs> cards in the future. Exactly. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get my timer ready and then I will introduce the part two card for you first, Aubrey. I keep hitting the wrong buttons on my phone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like you to describe a time that you had to change your plans. Go ahead. You may not be aware of this, but in the United States, there is a popular tradition that has been adopted that is The Elf on the Shelf. And it's actually a children's book. And you read the book and it comes with this little stuffed animal, this little elf. And it lets you know that every night this elf goes and visits Santa and then you and then comes back and finds a new little resting spot in your house. So we've done this for years with our children. It's a very fun tradition. But this year was different because we started, we decided to have the elf quarantine. So we had a little box for her. Our elf's name's Juliet. She has a little skirt and she was in the box with a little sign that said, um, all elves arriving from the North Pole have to quarantine for 14 days. We thought this was a great idea because it would save us 14 days of having to move the elf every night because spoiler alert, we have to do that, right? <laughs> so we had on December 1st, the kids woke up and Juliet was there in her little quarantine box. And my six-year-old daughter, Georgia, had a full-on meltdown. She was sobbing uncontrollably at the thought that Juliet might have COVID and had to quarantine. She was devastated and she couldn't believe, and she was so angry that she wouldn't be able to wake up every morning and find Juliet in her new home. So we had to change plans entirely. We said, oh, we can get her a COVID test. And in a couple days, she could come out of quarantine because we realized quickly this 14-day quarantine is not going to fly. And we're going to need to change our plans up. And so we created a letter from the North, North Pole. I mean, Santa sent a letter from the North Pole informing us that her COVID test was negative and she could come out of quarantine. So we're actually planning on having that show up with the Juliet tomorrow morning and we have a little tiny mask for her to wear and so then she'll be able to be thank out of you. quarantine thank <laughs> you oh my god that was so good you guys um please watch this on our YouTube channel because <laughs> you can see me like covering my You're mouth dying like like physically trying to stuff back in the laughter because that's, you know, I can't do that in a part two if I'm the examiner. Right. So like, yeah. well, and so you guys, I have her here to show you. So you definitely need to come back and watch the video. Cause I have to show you, this is Julia and her little quarantine box. Oh Look how God. cute she is with her little skirt and her little sign that says elves have to quarantine. <gasps> you <laughs> guys beautiful. made that. Oh my gosh, guys. You, oh, you have to you, go watch right? this on YouTube. Aubrey is showing you this elf on the shelf with her quarantine sign right now. That is so cute. <laughs> so cute. Um, all right. I want to highlight some vocabulary, guys. And remember, these answers we're giving are completely spontaneous, completely unscripted. So this vocabulary is 100% native. Okay. So this is stuff you should use to get that seven or higher. Um, okay. So the vocab I want to highlight guys is all perfect for like it most change, change of plans, right. That are unexpected and disappointing because <laughs> usually when we have to change our plans, it's disappointing. So don't say like, um, that, that it was bad. It wasn't good or whatever. Okay. So what well, a couple things you said, your daughter had a full on meltdown. So full on is like totally huge, right? Complete, um, great slangy phrasal verb. And then a meltdown is guys just picture any little girl that is so sad and upset and just like going to cry and scream. That's a meltdown. Um, sob instead of cry, sob uncontrollably, that verb and an adverb, those are often connoted together. We often say sob uncontrollably. 
Um, and then devastated, like extremely disappointed. And then this not gonna fly. It means like, this isn't gonna work. We can't do this. It's not gonna fly. Oh my God. So much great vocab. And oh my God, what a story. <laughs> I know. I felt it was like this really backfired on us, right? We just didn't see that coming. For some reason, we're like, oh, they'll think this is fun. This is different. No, they, no. I didn't realize how much they love like having her in a new spot every night. And, right. and just, I, I didn't realize too, for my daughter, how like in her mind, COVID is like, you could die. So she was oh connoting this with like, Juliet could have COVID and die. She was so upset. And I did not see that coming. It was such a parent fail to not see that coming. <laughs> oh my God. But uh, we have parent fails all the time. All the you time. can't be a parent and not have a parent fail. Like it comes with the territory. Exactly. Like here's a little spoiler alert for parenting. You never know what you're doing. You, <laughs> you make it up as you go along. And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Okay. I know. Just- it's so true. It's so true. My husband and I actually have this little fun podcast called Accidental Parenting. And that's exactly what it's about. Like you make it up as you go. No one really knows what they're doing. We don't have a handbook and like, we have some wins, but mostly fails. And that's what it's about. Oh my <laughs> gosh, okay. guys. Find Aubrey's and her oh, husband. Yeah. Cole's Me and my podcast. husband. <laughs> I love it. Um, All right. I'm ready okay. to ask you one. Are you ready? I got to get my timer ready so I can make sure that you speak for the full two minutes. <laughs> vital, you guys. <laughs> yes. Okay. Is- and same question for you, right? Yes. Or do you want yeah. a different one? Okay. All right. So Jessica, describe a recent change of plans that you had to make. Uh, Okay, this is an extremely disappointing yet timely um, question for right now. So because of the pandemic, right, we have had to change a lot of plans. Um, Over the summer, we were, my son and I were supposed to visit my mom and stepdad in Southern California. um, And we had to change that because obviously like we couldn't go at that time. But we thought, okay, like it's going to be fine by December. (laughs) Um, because we have been flying blind this entire time, right? There, we always think that the answer is just around the corner, right? We always think like, I even still have this light, this glimmer of hope that next month it'll be fine. Next month it'll be fine. But that hasn't happened. So anyway, moving on, we had changed our tickets to go be with my mom and stepdad for Christmas. And this was going to be such a special visit. And we thought, okay, even if stuff is closed, um, we can we can still go. We'll just play games and watch movies. It'll be fine. And then last night I was reading the New York Times and the very first story I saw was um, giving details about Governor Newsom's new uh, lockdown measures and how like all of these counties were closed and playgrounds were closed and blah, blah, blah. And I had to finally... Um, I had to finally commit myself to leaving my safe bubble because I, I am in a, I work from home. I don't personally know anybody that has COVID. And so it, it doesn't always seem as real to me as it should. Right. So I finally had to admit my, admit to myself that this would be a not responsible choice to get on an airplane and fly to one of the most like infected counties in America. So this morning I had to make that tough, tough call. I called my mom. I like, Thank you. Oh, oh okay. man. I feel like you could talk about that forever. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a devastating story. And you guys, it's especially sad because I was going to drive yeah. out to LA and meet Jessica. And I was so excited about that. I was going to bring my daughter who's her son's age. And they were going to hang out. It was going to be so fun, but totally irresponsible. I would have worn masks. (laughs) I think like, you know how fun it is guys to sort of pretend everything's okay for a while. Um, And I think uh, we call this like, um, there's a couple idioms. Having, um, having blinders on is a good idiom. Meaning like, you know, like you have blinders on your eyes. Like you're refusing, you cannot see the other things that you don't want to say. And then reality smacks you in the face and you realize, oh, (laughs) Smack down from reality, yeah. guys. In fact, you use some amazing idioms on your answer. You said um, flying blind, which is similar to having blinders on, right? Where you like, 
it's a, it, imagine if you're in an airplane and there's fog and a, a blizzard. And so that pilot is flying blind. They can't see what they're going. We use that idiom all the time when we're saying, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. The future is unsure. We're flying blind. Right. I just, yeah. Such like a, a synonym for that would be, um, to, to wing it like, yes. But, right. I feel like to wing it, I would say more band seven because I have heard students say that it is a little bit more common, but flying blind. I've never heard, heard a student say that. So that's like band eight, band nine right there. And it's so helpful to have that you have these 14 years of experience of, of knowing what students actually say during the test. You know what the examiners hear over and over and over. You know what you've never heard in a speaking exam. Like, right. that's just so nice that we can share that with our students. Be like, okay, I've heard that a few <laughs> times. This I've never heard. <laughs> that's been and nice. And it's cool. I could be like, no, that word's band seven. That word's <laughs> band eight. <laughs> <laughs> Based on how many times you've heard it in 14 years. Exactly. Okay, guys, there's another one in case you didn't catch it. She said, um, the answer is sometimes just around the corner. Oh, we will nice say one. this. That's such a good one. Yeah. You're like, oh, you, I don't know now, but I feel like it's just around the corner. You can say that about anything that's going to happen soon or, yeah. you know, just might happen soon. It's just around the corner. That's a good idiom. I love it. And then you used another one to say you had a glimmer of hope. We say this all the time. If you're just, you have just a little bit of hope still. I have a glimmer of hope. So many I, good idiots. Like, I like to picture that one, guys. Um, like having images attached to new vocabulary is is essential for remembering it and being yes. able to use it, right? So anytime we are using new vocab, try to create a picture, an image in your mind. So this glimmer of hope, definitely high scoring, guys. I picture it like um, you know how like in the movies when you see like a like a nugget of gold, if it's like a Western movie and they're panning it's for gold shining. or something. The sun yes. is glinting off it. Yes, and it's like this tiny little like shiny little object. I picture that, but like in my heart or something like that. <laughs> like having a glimmer of hope. That's what I see. <laughs> I love that. That's so smart to have a mental image to help you remember idioms, especially when the meaning of the words actually, do, you know, with idioms that are so different, the actual meaning. So when yeah. you can remember that and have it be associated with the real meaning, genius helps you recall. You know, it. And like, I feel like so many students are visual learners and they might not realize that because that type, that learning style is usually not catered to, especially in traditional classrooms. It's, yes. it's based on like words, right? Um, so if you're a visual learner, pictures are very important. So creating these images is so important. And on that note, guys, visual learner or not, if you could see us on YouTube teaching you this vocabulary, acting it out, seeing what our faces do associated with this vocabulary, going to remember this stuff a lot better guys. So come back to IELTS Energy TV. This is episode 971. Yes. Um, so look for that on our blog and on YouTube. Yes, definitely. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure you're subscribed to IELTS Energy TV. We have two videos every week. So much great content. You don't want to miss any of it. So be sure that you subscribe. So you're notified when there's new content. Yes. Oh my gosh. And like at least two videos. It's been more lately when we have guests and stuff. Yeah, so that's much. true. And those are always so fun too. We try to record video with whenever we have a guest, whenever it's possible, because it's so fun. You get to feel like you actually meet them and see yeah. how they interact. It's always so great. Especially when it's other students like you guys. Yes. I mean, if you could see how other students, how relieved and confident and fabulous they feel after getting high IELTS scores, like it will motivate you, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good point for sure. I know. Right. Thanks for joining me today. Merry Christmas, Jessica. Merry Christmas, <laughs> Aubrey. We will meet in person one of these days. One I day. know we will. Someday. <laughs> Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Whether you celebrate Christmas or not, have an awesome holiday. Yes. Happy Thank holidays. You. We love you students. Okay. Yes. Right. See you Bye. next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.